uh, when we talk about the ECG components. So we're going to talk about the waves, the complexes, the segments, there's intervals, there's an isoelectric line. There's a whole bunch of stuff, a whole bunch of like big old words that seem like they mean a lot. They don't mean too much. But this first wave right here, what what is that? A P wave. What is the P wave? Atrial contraction, correct. So, I'm going to fill a pen here. All right, so you've got your P wave. I'm going to make that a little bolder. All right, so that is atrial contraction. All right, what's this, what's this next thing? QRS complex. QRS complex, yes. So it went from a wave to a complex. All right, how about this last one? T-wave, okay, that is right. So what is your QRS signifying? What's happening? QRS is ventricular contraction. Ventricular contraction, that's right. How about the T-wave? It's ventricular drop, drop, relaxation. Okay, ventricular relaxation or repolarization. So depolarization, remember, is contracting. Repolarization is recharging or relaxing, okay? So we've got our waves and our complexes on here. So let's talk about our interval. So we've got a thing called a PR interval. PR interval is gonna be from the beginning of your P wave to the beginning of your QRS complex, right? That, of course, is going left to right. So that's gonna be a certain time, a certain length of time. And that's gonna be important for when we start interpreting our rhythms as well. Um, and then let's talk about a segment. No. PR interval. Yes, PR interval, yeah. You may hear people refer to it as a PRI, and that's just PR interval, yeah. And we'll discuss that here in a minute when we go over our five rules, okay? So next, let's talk about a, how about a segment? So everybody in your book, if you've got it, flip to page 22. So on page 22, on the right-hand side of that page, you see ST segment. It says that's the distance between the end of the S wave and the beginning of the T wave. And it again measures time. That time measurement is going to be between the ventricular depolarization and the beginning of relaxation or repolarization. That's gonna be important for interpreting rhythms too. So if this is our QRS complex here, so here's our S, the beginning of our T wave, let's say right here. So this little segment there is gonna be our ST segment. That is what we're looking for. Has anybody ever heard of the word STEMI? S-T-E-M-I? So a STEMI is a heart attack. ST elevation, myocardial infarction. So ST elevation, when you're looking at this segment, there's a point on this segment, and if it is, say it is raised up, it's not supposed to be, then that's when a little bit later on in your book, maybe even this chapter, now just a little bit later on, it's gonna talk about, um, about your ST elevation and what different parts mean as far as like myocardial injury, um, ischemia, if there's a blockage, um, an infarct, uh, all kinds of stuff. Just fancy words for not getting as much oxygen as it needs, all the way down to, oh, the tissue is dying because we're not getting oxygen at all, okay? So that is gonna be where the ST segment comes into play. And we'll talk about that when we go over, over our little boxes. So, erase my little line here. So we've gone over our P wave, our PR interval, our QRS complex, our ST segment, and our T wave. We know what each of the waves mean. We know what the big QRS means. 
What's happening while the ventricles are depolarizing on the QRS at the same time? Atria is relaxing. All right, there we go. Atria is, are relaxing. So that's got to happen. If something contracts, it's going to have to relax. All right, so if the top part of the heart contracts, then it's going to have to relax even while the bottom part is contracting. There is a thing called the isoelectric line. So this isoelectric line is the baseline that you see right here, all right? All right, so the, I, oh gosh, I can't even spell today. I need to wake up and my coffee needs to kick in. So our isoelectric line it's not going to be just this flat part. It's going to be all the way across. Okay? The isoelectric line, that is again just the baseline. That's what we're that's what we're looking for when we're coming off uh, checking for the ST segment that we were talking about before. Um, we want to compare it to that isoelectric line. How far above it is it or how far below it is it? All right? And we'll get into that later in the book as well. Let's see. All right. Everybody answered these like spot on. So <laughs> any questions about this right here? All right. Let's go on to our boxes. Flip back to page 21 and look at the top right. So when we got our ECG paper, everybody can see the bold lines and then the teeny tiny smaller lines that I can barely see most of the time. Let's pretend on here. So this is just one box. We've got our bold line, then we've got our little smaller lines, and then we've got all those tiny small boxes as well. Okay. So each of these boxes signifies different things. So if we're talking from bottom to top, bottom to top here, so we're being, that's being measured in millimeters, and that's signifying millivolts, okay? The millivolts are not, right now we're not gonna get into millivolts. We'll talk mainly about millimeters, okay? So one small box is how many? Did anybody get that from reading? One, two. All right, so we're talking about top to bottom, not left to right. So we're not talking about time, so millimeters, one. yep, one small box is one millimeter here, okay? That means five small boxes or one bold box, one big box is, there you go, five millimeters, okay? Now, everybody should answer this because y'all just said it, from left to right, one small box is signifying time, okay? So one, yep. One small box, 0 0.04 seconds, all right? Let's take that and multiply it by five because we've got five small boxes to make one big one. 0 0.20 seconds, yes, I like it. All right, why are we caring, why are we worrying about the time on here? Anybody? The rate Okay, so yeah, you can check rate with it. Um, you're going to be able to see when you look at the time and you count up, if my QRS is in here and it's like super wide, you're going to be able to count up and say, oh, all those small boxes in that QRS complex, so that means that my QRS is like, like 0 0.4. Well, there's a certain, once we get into our five rules, there's a certain time limit that each of those have, the PR interval has a certain time limit that it needs to be in to be considered normal. QRS complex, same thing, certain time limit it needs to be in to be considered normal. If it's shorter than that, we've got a problem. Heart's beating too fast. If it's wider than that, we got a problem. We've still got a problem, all right? So, let's see, where are we at here? The one represents the speed. So left to right is gonna represent time. Okay, on this part, okay? So left to right is time. And then top to bottom is millimeters. 
All right. So millimeter is distance. Does it represent the distance? That's going to be the uh, the height of it. Remember, also we said millivolts. Mm -hmm. So how much uh, how much of the electricity is showing? Think of, think of it that way. Okay. So boxes. If I have a QRS complex that is three boxes, three small boxes wide, what's the time? Twelve. Okay. Point one two. Okay. Yeah. I knew what you meant. All right. So remember when we're talking about the time, especially in medical professions, um, especially if you're writing it, if you put point one two, some people could miss that the point. They could miss that decimal and they could read it as 12. So make sure when you're writing them 0 0.04 or 0 0.20 or 0 0.12, uh, that's going to be especially important if you go on further and you're dealing with like medications and stuff like that. Um, it's going to be real important because giving 0 0.5 milligrams of Ativan or Versed versus giving five milligrams of Ativan or Versed is the difference between, oh, I'm gonna have to breathe for this person and I'm gonna have to, could be the difference between, I need to breathe for this person and I don't need to breathe for this person, uh, depending on the situation as well. So we talked about our boxes here. Now, everybody pull out, oh, oh. Does everybody have this page? It's got the boxes and then the P, PR, QRS, ST, so this was in the attachments that I sent everybody. You can just print it out. Um, what we just talked about is the first part of the page. <laughs> Let me walk around. Sorry, my five rolls, my five rolls, just the boxes. The R, it's the one I've got the oh, really okay. I was weird. looking for the whole, sorry, I'm not an artist. Oh, yeah. <laughs> it's the one I've got the really crude drawing on. You see it? Should be no. Uh, no. Oh, that's it. Okay, I'm very drunk. I'm sorry. Well, I am like 20 feet away from everybody. So, okay. So, what we just talked about for that first part on the boxes, that's all listed right here as well. Okay. Remember, all this is open book, open note, okay? Everything except the NHA exam. So don't hesitate to use this stuff to your advantage. It's only gonna help you out. Um, only thing we didn't talk about is, which we've mentioned before in the very first class that I had with y'all. So EKG rhythms are interpreted using the six second strip. We don't interpret rhythms with the 12 lead. 12 leads are for diagnosing. Diagnosing, which is the very next thing on there, diagnosing heart attacks, left ventricular hypertrophy, um, pericarditis, different things like that. So if you have the single line, that's your diagnosing strip, okay? That's gonna be your four lead strip. And then the 12 lead for diagnosing, or sorry, the single line, that's gonna be your six second strip for interpretation. And then your 12 lead is for diagnostics, okay? And the next part that goes over the segments and the intervals. And then it lists the five rules for EKGs at the bottom. So the five rules for EKGs are listed right up here, okay? That is also going to be on the other pages here. There's two pages total, five rules for interpreting a three lead ECG. And we're gonna go over this as well. So it's this one here. Five simple rules for interpreting a three lead ECG. If you've bought EKG books, if you've done any of that other stuff, you may get confused reading the other books because they're they may tell you to go a different way, different way about it. With these five rules, if you can remember these five, 
that we've got written up here, rate, regularity, P wave, PR interval, and QRS complex. You can apply it to every single rhythm. I still, when I get out a 12 lead, if I'm like trying to interpret it, and I've got time to, I still look at it and I'm like, all right, R, R, P, P, R, Q, R, S. That's what I write beside all of them, okay? And that way I can apply my rules to find out, is this how it's supposed to be? Is it how it's supposed to look? Or do I need to look at it from a different perspective and go a different route? So when we talk about the rate, we mentioned before, one of the simplest waves is to do what? Count what waves? Yep, so counting your R points. So counting those, if you get your strip, you put your paper over top of it, and I say, there's an R, there's an R, there's an R, so on and so forth. So you count how many R's you've got, all right? You've got six R waves in a 60 second strip or a six second strip, sorry, your rate's gonna be what? 60. All right, is that normal? Yes. Okay, there we go. So we know what note is firing. The SA note. There we go, so SA note is firing. That is considered normal because a normal heart rate for an adult, 60 to 100, right? So we've made our tick marks on our paper. That's gonna be used when we talk about regularity next, all right? But let's talk about a couple of other methods for doing this rate calculation. So there's a 300 method. You take two consecutive R waves, here and here, all right? You count the number of large boxes between them. So say there was one large box in here, and then you can divide it by 300. Um, that's a reliable method. I think the most accurate method is the next one, which is the 1500 method. With the 1500 method, you, can, you find your R points here, count how many small boxes you have in between those R, R points, those R waves, okay? If you have, let's say we've got 10 small boxes in between the R waves, okay? 1500 method, so, well, you're not dividing that by that. So let's do that. 1,500 and you divide it by 10. How many small boxes you have. And then what do you have? There's your heart rate. Okay. You can even go down to, oh, I've got what looks like about seven and a half small boxes in here, depending on where it falls on that line. But 1,500 method, I think, is the most, one of the most reliable methods to do. If you're trying to get a quick and close answer, you can count your R points. You can get pretty close. You may get 60 instead of 63 or 64, something like that, um, depending on how much of your actual line is actually showing before your strip cuts off. Yeah. If, it, if it's like more than, at least 60 or more than 60, then you know that SA is working. But if it is like more than 100, what does that mean? So there's different rhythms that we'll learn as well, and the book will go into that. Um, once you get a little bit further into it, there's a thing called like supraventricular tachycardia. Um, there's all kinds of all kinds of different rhythms in that book. The book will get into that. Um, I'm not going to get into it right now, just so we can make sure to get these five rules down. But the book will uh, definitely cover that. Um, the question that was asked was. 60 to 100 since that's considered normal once it's over 100 and what is that uh, what is that meaning what is that implying so we talked about svt which is going to be covered later uh, in the book and in the course um but anything over 100 we know is tachycardic all right so even if it even if it's 101 then it's and it's a normal sinus rhythm or a sinus rhythm then that's going to be sinus tachycardia so just beating faster than it should once you get up to around 150, 160, different people say different things. The book probably says something else, but once you get up to a certain point, that's when they consider it like SVT, supraventricular tachycardia. Um, something like that is, you can't, it's beating so fast, you can't tell what rhythm it is, even though there's still an underlying rhythm. So our job is to slow down the heart, 
rate enough so we can see what rhythm it is. Is it a sinus rhythm? Is it something else that we need to be concerned with? Okay, did that answer kinda? Yeah, all right. So we talked about the counting the R waves, the 300 method, the 1500 method, and then there's a triplicate method on here as well. I don't, I don't use that, but for the NHA exam, um, focus on your 1500 method and your 300 method, okay? So let's go back to our tick marks that we made on our paper here. So we're talking about regularity now. So we need to find out, you've got three different possibilities for how regular a rhythm is. All right, so you've got, where's the other one? There. Let me write this up here real quick. So obviously, we've got a regular rhythm, all right? There's our first, first possibility. Now our next one, you got regularly irregular, okay? And our last choice, I'm sorry, my writing is scribbling. Irregularly irregular, all right? Nothing makes sense on irregularly irregular, okay? Regularly irregular, the beats aren't a perfect spacing apart. However, if you put a tick mark on the first one, the second one, and the third one, you might move it two complexes down and it lines up again, okay? And in regular, all of them are gonna line up when you do your tick marks. So, we take our tick marks here we put it up to find our R points and we're gonna move it across, put our tick marks on, look, same distance apart, let's move it. So say the rest of them on our strip were the same distance apart. That's a regular rhythm, okay? So we have identified our rate already. We already know 60 to 100 is the normal for an adult. Um, less than 60 is bradycardia and then more than 100 is tachycardia. So, identifying our regularity, we've got our tick marks. We're gonna find out, is that regular, is it regularly irregular, or is it irregularly irregular? Again, irregularly irregular, nothing matches up with your tick marks, because there's no, there's no rhyme or reason to it, okay? On this page also, it tells you about the um, regular rhythms have the same space between all the R waves. Irregular rhythms have a varying space. And then uh, it goes into regularly irregular. They have a pattern to the irregularities. And then irregularly irregular down at the bottom of that section. So there's one most commonly uh, encountered rhythm that is irregularly irregular down here with our third one. And everybody probably already knows what it is. If you don't know what it is, then you've heard of it before. Has everybody heard of AFib? Atrial fibrillation? Yeah, okay, so the top part of the heart is just fibrillating, it's not filling, it's not pumping like it should. So that is our most common one. If you see something that is irregularly irregular, then your rhythm is most likely gonna be your AFib on that, all right? Now we talked about our rate and our regularity. So let's talk about our P waves. The next one on here. So the impulse needs to originate in the SA node. SA node. We know that, let me find a different color here if I can. One that we can see. So when we talk about our P wave, we're gonna say, is it RUSA? All right, R-U-S-A. I know this seems like a lot, but after we talk about it, we'll put it on a couple of rhythms. We'll see, see what we get out of it, all right? So P-wave, so is it round? 
and I don't mean it has to be perfectly round or a circle or anything like that. When you've got a P wave that looks like that versus like that, so that's gonna be peaked, okay? That rounded is gonna be exactly what, it's, exactly what it says, rounded. It's more like a hump instead of a mountain, okay? Next, the U is it upright, okay? So our P wave, going back over here. Oh gosh, falling over. Going back over here, so this one's rounded. It's upright, all right? So it's doing what it's supposed to do rather than being flattened or being inverted. And that's, a, that's gonna signify a different rhythm. And then the S, so. Is it symmetrical? Does it look the same on both sides? If you were to put a line up in the middle of that P wave, does it look almost the same on each side of that line? If it's rounded and it's upright, and then it looks the same on both sides of that imaginary line, then it is gonna be symmetrical. If you've got one to where it's starting to go up and it does one of those things, that's not symmetrical, obviously, okay? So does it look the same on the both sides of that imaginary line? And our A that we're talking about for the RUSA is associated. Is your P wave associated with the QRS? This is associated. That is not associated. Okay, so that wouldn't fall within our uh, associated for the RUSA when we talk about our P waves, all right? So associated, it's gotta be close to it. It's gotta, we know that after the atria contracts, the ventricle's gotta contract as well. So it's gonna have to be right there at it. So if you have, we talked about a peaked P wave. So if you have something that looks like a mountaintop, it's not rounded or if it's flattened, if it's got a notch in it, if it's upside down or inverted, then we know, um, or if it looks like the blade of a saw, then we know that it's not originating in the SA node. So it's gotta be another pacemaker site that's trying to take over. So then that makes us think, hey, what in the world is going on here? Um, what do we have to figure out, okay? Next, we talked about all of this. There's the P wave, our PR interval. Here's where the time comes into play. So we know the PR interval is the beginning of our P wave, it's the beginning of our QRS complex, right? PR interval is gonna be the time, so left to right. And then if you do have this paper, if not, check it out in your email when you get home. Um, the PR interval that we're looking for is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. So 0 0.12, 0.20 seconds. All right, so that means that how many small boxes does it need to be at a minimum? Three. Okay. How about at a maximum? Five. All right, so three small boxes to five small boxes for your PR interval. That is considered normal. That's what's going to fit with the normal sinus rhythm, okay? So if you have a PR interval that is longer than five boxes, five small boxes here, so it's holding on to it for a long time. So that means we're gonna have some type of AV block, atrioventricular block, okay? If it's less than three boxes or 0 0.12 seconds, then there's a, there's a heart rhythm called Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. Um, and that's just part, the AV node is actually bypassed on that, so the electricity skips by all that. We don't talk about Wolf-Parkinson-White much in here. There's one uh, one rhythm strip that shows you what it's about, and it's you don't see it an awful, uh, an awful lot. I've only seen it one time in three years. So we had it doubled if it is less, what do you say? If it is less, if it is less than 0.12. So if it is less than, point one, than 0.12, so it usually indicates WPW or Wolf-Parkinson-White syndrome. 
okay? And that means that the AV node is being bypassed. So that electricity is going from the SA node and just skipping right over the AV node, okay? If it is more than 0 0.20 seconds, then that usually indicates an AV block. So rather than skipping over it and it being the Wolf Parkinson White syndrome, then that AV block is going to be there. So there's a, there's a different way they go about treating that AV block. Okay, does that make sense? On there, so. What we're going to focus on is 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds, okay? It's going to need to be right in between that, that time when we measure it, okay? Because it is long, it will take longer time to... Okay. I mean, like because the AV node is blocked, if there's a block in that node, then that electricity is not getting through all the way. So that's what, that's exactly what the time, yes, you, you're, you're on track. That's exactly what the time is indicating. So if something happens here and it doesn't happen again until over here, then it's taking a longer time for that to actually get through and flow, uh, flow properly, we'll say that. Yeah, but yes, that was, that was it. You answered your own question there, so yeah. And let's see here. So there's our PR interval. So we got that 0 0.12 to 0 0.20 seconds. The last of our five rules is going to be our QRS complex, all right? So we know where our QRS complex is. We know what it looks like. How long does that have to be? How long should it be? 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.10. Okay, so 0. 0.6 to 0. 0.10. How about we make it super simple? Less than 0. 0.12. Less than 0. 0.12. Let's make it super simple there rather than having to memorize less or 0 0.06 to 0 0.10 seconds. Just remember, less than 0 0.12 seconds, all right? So 0 0.12 seconds is, again, how many boxes? Three boxes. Okay, so less than three small boxes there. All right, if it fits in that category, then that means it's part of our normal sinus rhythm, okay? All right, so if we have a rate of 60 to 100, it's a regular rhythm. Our P waves are RUSA, round, upright, symmetrical, and associated. Our PR interval is between 0 0.12 and 0 0.20 seconds. And our QRS complex is less than 0 0.12 seconds. You got a normal sinus rhythm. That fits into the category or into the classification of normal sinus rhythm. Does there, the big packet? It if it is uh, like single box. Or... If it's uh, yeah, if it's less than less than zero point one two, yeah, then that's gonna just yeah, just remember remember that. So if it is a single box, then that's when it's gonna be potentially classified as like SVT, supraventricular tachycardia, because it's so small, you can't see. You've seen how small those tiny boxes are on there. Super hard to see. You, you can't tell on there, oh, is that is that a pacemaker spike? Is that the ventricle actually contracting? Like, what's going on with this? Can we give an image to this, like two box to three box or something like that? But so this, if you wanted to give it a range to it, so if you want to memorize 0 0.06 to 0 0.10 seconds, that's that's perfectly fine. As long as it's less than 0 0.12, it's going to fit your criteria because it's hard when you're talking about, because one box is 0 0.04. So if you're talking about 0 0.06 on here, then that means you're going to be looking, you're going to be having to cut those small boxes in half or in, uh, not in, not exactly in half, but you're going to be having to cut those small boxes so you can get the 0 0.06 to 0 0.10. Yeah, but by all means, if you would like to memorize 0 0.06 to 0 0.10, go right ahead. But uh, less than 0 0.12, that's going to help fit your criteria, and it's going to be a little easier to memorize. Okay, the big packet here that's got all the different rhythms, 
that are filled out and everything. Each of these rhythms, of course, has what rhythm it is at the bottom, but it's gonna tell you, so we just talked about a normal sinus rhythm. So 60 to 100, the regularity, the P waves, the PR interval, and the QRS complex. So, does everybody have this? Back at five chance. Yeah. Uh, oh, did you have that? That's fine, you can just sit. Just, uh, just look at that, just try not to back on it. Now you can write on the one, after you get it printed. So look at your, uh, everybody look at your waves on your strip. Did you, did you get one? There it is. Yeah. All right, so everybody look at your strip. So go ahead and take a piece of paper, a post-it note, whatever the case may be, uh, or whatever you need. So um, tell me what rate we've got. Okay, what rate is that actual strip? Rather than 60 to 100, I wanna know exactly what rate we've got on that strip. Okay, does everybody agree? So if you count your R waves, you've got eight of those, so rate of 80, yes, correct. So next, look at your regularity. Take your piece of paper, your post-it note, do your little tick marks, and then move it from R wave to R wave. Do I need a piece of paper? Okay. All right, so everybody go ahead and make your tick marks. Hold it up to your R waves and make your tick marks where each of your R waves are. Yeah, probably three or four of them. And then you're going to move it. So you take this paper and hold it up like this. The tick mark for the R wave, R wave. Yeah, you can do three or four of them. And now move it over, slide it towards the right to see is that matching up with all of your R waves? So it is. So we've got a regular rhythm, okay? Next, look at your P waves. The P waves on there, do they look round? Are they upright? Are they pretty much symmetrical? And are they associated with the QRS complex? Yes to all the above. Yes to all the above. So your P waves are RUSA. All right. So. It's not like rounded. Yeah, as long as it's not like super peaked like a mountaintop. So it may look like a hill. Um, when we say rounded, it's hard to get, especially an EKG machine, to print like a perfectly rounded to where it looks like the earth's been cut in half and it's like rolling over perfectly. So um, it may look just a little bit like it's pointed. Yeah, yeah, point it, or it may be uh, like a little plateau at the top to where it's kind of flattened out. But yeah, just um, it's just the EKG machine, especially since these are these have been printed and copied uh, multiple different times, so uh, it may not look as clear. So our P waves are RUSA on that one. So let's look at our PR interval. So go ahead and make your tick mark on the paper at the beginning of your P wave and at the beginning of your QRS complex and tell us how long you have, how many small boxes, how many seconds. So your PR interval for your next part of your five rules here, all right? So make your tick mark at the beginning of your P wave and then the beginning of your QRS complex. Either way, because three small boxes is how many seconds? Zero plus 12. Okay. How many four small boxes? Zero plus 
There you go, 0 0.16. So either way, that fits into our criteria there, okay? QRS complex. So make your tick, tick marks again, beginning of QRS complex to the end of your QRS complex. How many small boxes and how much time? Okay, you got 0 0.06, all right. Okay. Okay. I'm in between like two and three. Okay, so we've got a two and three small boxes, a 0 0.06, possibly a 0 0.08, is that right? Okay, does that fit our criteria? Less than 0 point, sorry y'all. Less than 0 0.12 seconds, so that fits our criteria. So again, it goes right back to this is our normal sinus rhythm criteria, all right? Everything on here for the next rhythm, uh, let's see, is, what's the next one? Sinus attack, sinus tachycardia on the page. So on the next rhythm, everything's gonna be the same as far as your five rules, except for what? Your rate and your rate's got to be greater than 100. Okay. All right. When you get this uh, get this printed out, the next one. Let's see. Everything's the same except your rate is 40. What do you have? Sinus bradycardia. Sinus bradycardia. Yep. Okay. So less than 60 is bradycardia. Bradycardia. Greater than 100 is tachycardia. And that just means Brady means slow, tacky means fast. Okay? And then 60 to 100 is your normal where you want to be at for your heart rhythm. Okay? But when we talk about sinus rhythms, these five rules are what we're talking about. Okay? Everything is going to match except for the rate until you get to the regularity. Now, if it's regular, irregular, that we talked about earlier, but everything else matches the same. Your rate is, let's say 80. All your rules are the exact same except the regularity is regularly irregular then. That's when you've got your arrhythmia, okay? So you can still plot your R waves, even though it looks different, you can still slide it over and they still match up sometimes, okay? We moved through chapter two, huh? Does it have uh, detail on the T-wave? Does what have the T-wave? The T-wave. Yes, so on that page, yeah. When you look on here, I'm sorry, can just a second? So, let's see, that's Q, R, S. Remember we talked about the ST segment up there? So S T segment is right there. Okay? So that is our T wave and then our P wave is right there. So it is a little bit. They're hard to see sometimes. Go back up to this one. Since it's so fast, what if this is happening? So the ventricle is relaxing, but this is starting to happen. So the atria is starting to contract. So it may look like you've got, like you've got your atria contracting at the same time your ventricle is relaxing, okay? So if you take that out, you may get something that looks like that. It may look kind of buried when you get in there. This can 
symmetrical or asymmetrical? So if it's for symmetrical versus asymmetrical. Mm -hmm. So on that, for tachycardic rhythms, it's going to be a little diff a little bit more difficult to tell. But to make sure when you're talking about your symmetric, uh, if it's symmetrical or not, just go back to go back to the same thing. Draw your an imaginary line right down the middle of it. If it looks generally the same, and like we talked about, EKG paper is gonna, gonna look weird, especially if you get it printed out and you see artifact, and you see all kinds of other stuff on there, um, or if it's crumpled up and you try to unfold it and it's, but draw that imaginary line down the middle and see, does it look pretty much the same over here as it does over here, okay? And that's gonna meet your, that's gonna help you meet your, your RUSA criteria for your P wave. You still you still can, yes. Yeah, you still can because look at your P wave on there, um, on that sheet. What does the P wave say after? So on this part for the tachycardia, so it's still round, upright, symmetrical, and associated. It's just hard to see in there. As you go through the packet, here, you, you'll get into your different rhythms, talking about your, your atrial rhythms, your pacemaker rhythms, all this other stuff. But also pay attention in your book when you start looking through chapter three. It's got your five rules down here under each of the rhythms, all right? It's got your five rules. Chapter three is only going to deal with your sinoatrial or your SA node rhythms. Okay, you get to the back of it, then you've got to fill in your stuff. Use your rolls, count your R waves, use the 1500 method, count your small boxes. Do the tick marks on the paper, see if it's regular or irregular or irregularly irregular, okay? Here's a hint, this chapter three, you're not gonna have an irregularly irregular rhythm, okay? Just with chapter three, once you get into the next one, they may start showing up. Okay, but we're talking about SA node rhythms in here. Look at your P wave. You can put RUSA on your P wave. You can put normal, whatever you want to put on there. You can even write, write it out, round, upright, symmetrical, associated. So you get some burned into your mind a lot more, a lot easier. And same thing with your PR interval, your QRS complex. So we might have some different answers because again, like Alicia was saying, my eyes cross every time I look at small boxes on an EKG paper, I'm like, I can't see what that is. I just have to take my best my eyes about cross just then, just talking about it. My eyes twitching, I think. But use your best guess on there. When you do your practice trips at the end of the chapter, remember it does have answers at the end. Try not to just copy those. Try to actually do it so you, I mean, yeah, we're not gonna be, this is not a cardiology class. We're not gonna be coming out of here going straight into medical school to uh, with a focus in cardiology. Like, that's not our goal here. Our goal is to be able to interpret some of our rhythms, place our electrodes correctly, but I don't want somebody working on me that's just like, oh yeah, we're just gonna put these stickers on you. Oh, well, what, what are you doing? Oh, I don't know. They just told me to do it. I want somebody that's gonna be, oh, we're getting a picture of your heart. Oh, well, what does this do? I'm more confident if someone's like, oh, this is gonna get, there's a bunch of stickers, but it's gonna get pictures of the different sides of your heart. It's gonna make, let us be able to see them or let the doctor be able to see them. Um, to find out if there's anything going on with your heart or what's going on with your heart, depending on whatever the case may be. All right. Did that answer, did that ease some worries for people? If you've looked at any of the quizzes or anything, did that ease some worries at all? I'm going to end the recording here. That was a 55-minute recording. Good Lord. Bye.